Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now it's never a good idea to blow the budget on a high-end CPU and then skimp on everything else, but what if you did? The i9-14900K here is one of the best processors money can buy, but it costs quite a lot of said money and is very power hungry. It's not the sort of CPU you'd pair with the cheapest Socket 1700 motherboard available, right? Well, this is my trusty MSI H610MB DDR4. Don't get me wrong, it's fine for entry level or mid range builds, and I've been using it with my i5 12400F for years without any issues. This video isn't too in depth, it's just me slapping a hot and hungry CPU on a cheap board and seeing what happens. I also stuck a 360mm AIO on here too, which looks quite comical but also highlights our first noteworthy issue, lack of motherboard headers. There's no CPU pump or ARGB header here, but we can make do. The i9-14900K booted up fine, and in this video I also have it paired with a 4070 Super. We can set the type of cooler we're using in the BIOS, which will in turn tweak the power limit, but there's only so much this board can handle. On a higher tier board, this CPU will report an all-core clock of 5700MHz in games. In fact, here is some gameplay footage highlighting just that. I'm using a DDR4Z790 board to make sure we weren't also seeing an FPS advantage because of faster DDR5. The DDR4 speed is 3200MHz, of which I have 32 gigs in dual channel. Nothing fancy. Our i9 is hitting 5.7 GHz across the board and is on occasion consuming over 200 watts of power. The stock 253 watt power limit is enforced. Time to switch to our H610M board then, which by the way does officially support the 4900K. This doesn't guarantee it'll work well though. Running through the same game tests and we can see from the on-screen overlay that this processor is using way less power and will seldom exceed 4.6 GHz, it's rather restricted. In pairing with the 4070 Super, we're still seeing respectable gaming results and I've included comparisons on screen between the two boards. We're still getting a more than playable experience, but it's definitely not as smooth or consistent this time around. The average FPS figures in some instances are also quite a bit lower. There's also the question of longevity, I guess, when I was researching other people's experiences of doing this, or at least thinking about doing this, hopefully they got talked out of it, I noticed a lot of people's concerns were mainly regarding the VRMs. Throttling, overheating and lack of suitable power delivery were all phrases I read multiple times, but to be honest the experience today isn't completely horrible. Realistically you shouldn't pair a top end i9 with a bottom of the barrel motherboard, but you can and it will still complement a decent graphics card quite nicely. To finalise, I ran a Cinebench render test, and yeah, this is where the performance differences between a fully utilised 14900K and a very restricted, strangled 14900K are most notable. I mean, nearly 22K is still a respectable score, but we're leaving a lot on the table. Anyway, this was fun to try. I want to reiterate that cheap motherboards are often more than fine for low-end or mid-range chips, and you shouldn't be put off H610 boards or AMD A520 boards if you're on a tight budget. Just make sure that you're aware of potential limitations. And always be sure to try and put together a more balanced gaming build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.